Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad in the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is about the synchronized keyword and specifically applying it to instant methods. I'm going to open up my web browser to my website javacjava.com and when this finishes loading here we'll scroll down to the synchronized instance methods tutorial. Now the synchronized keyword can be applied to a method or a block of code. Now the primary purpose of the synchronized keyword is to lock a shared resource to a single thread. The technical term for locking a resource is called an intrinsic lock or a monitor lock. In this lock tutorial I will demonstrate populating an array list for multiple threads using the non-thread safe add method. Right, that's in the ArrayList class. Now this tutorial will demonstrate applying the synchronized keyword to an instance method to make our method thread safe. All right, let's come down here and highlight this source code. Oops, all right, let's try that again. Control C to copy or right click and select copy. I'm gonna move my browser off screen here. I've got a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop, but if you don't, you create one really fast by right clicking, selecting new shortcut, CMD next and finish. It's just that easy. Let's go and open this up. First thing you want to do is type in Java C, which is a Java compiler command. You should see all this stuff scroll by. However, if you receive an error message, watch my tutorial on installing and configuring the uh, Java development kit. Make sure you get that done and before you continue on CLS to clear the screen CD space backslash CD short for change directory backslash tells it to go to the root. We'll make a directory here called Java with the MD command. I already have that folder, but if you don't, it'll go ahead and create one for you. I'm going to change directories to the Java folder. I'm going to make a directory here called um, uh, synchroni Synchronized Instance. Synchronized Instance. Okay, let's go. Let's change directories there. And let's uh, notepad a uh, synchronized in instance. Java. I think I got that spelled right. That'll be the name of my source code file there. All right, let's go ahead and paste this stuff in here and come up here and save this. All right, so I've got three classes in here. Um, the first one, Synchronize Instance, it's just got the, uh, the main method entry point here, right? And basically what I'm going to be doing is I'm creating an um, a reference variable IL of instance list type, which is my class down here, and just basically initializing that to a new instance list object. Now the instance list class, it has this, uh, basically this encapsulated array list here. Well, technically it's not too encapsulated, but <clears throat> um, it's good enough for here. Actually, technically it is, because display list, I'm only displaying it to the console. But anyway, all right, so I've got this um, encapsulated array list number list here, right? And what I want to do is I want to populate it with the numbers 0 through 99 using child threads, right? 100 child threads to populate this, this number list array. So I've got this method here called add to list, right? And it takes in basically an integer number and I invoke the add method from the array list class with the, uh, per, with the parameter value basically there. And so that's how we do that, okay? And down here, I've got the display list class, which will just simply uh, display to the console uh, number list, which is our array list. So fairly, fairly simple there, right? Um, down here in the number thread class, the number thread, it of course implements runnable. So it is a runnable object. And I've got two, um, two instance variables. Both of them are private there. The first one is number and the second one is ref to il. Okay, so my il is my instance list reference right up here. So when I create a new number thread, right, I'm gonna be passing it my reference, right? And remember, Java is passed by value, so um, we're gonna get a, uh, that reference variable will still point to this object created up here, right? So we'll still have our unique array list pass through. We only have, we'll have one array list object and that's that one right there created right here okay but i'm going to be passing that reference variable to the number thread class there right so in the constructor that instance list type ref to il right i'll populate that to the local value there using this statement right there and then of course number i'll populate i'll assign to the uh 
the instance variable of that there, okay? And then I'll invoke from the thread class, right, using the thread constructor that takes a runnable, this, right? This being the number thread object that's gets created. And since we implement runnable, this is a runnable object. And then I'll invoke the start method, which will then in turn invoke the run method. Now in the run method there for this, this particular, whatever thread gets started up there, I'll just be using the reference variable ref to il, right, and then add to list. Now because Java is passed by value, we're not, it's not creating any sort of a new list. This is just a new reference variable pointing originally to the original object created up here, okay? And so we're gonna add to list basically the number that we pass in there. So all in all, not too difficult there. All right, and then after we're done running this 100 times, creating new number thread objects, sub, uh, new child threads basically, we'll display the number of active threads and then we'll display the list, okay? So let's go ahead and come up here and save this. Let's clear our screen, Java C, and by the way, this code is like riddled with problems and we're gonna solve each one of those and explain, um, you know, basically what Synchronize does along the way there. All right, let's go ahead and compile that and let's then run it. <clears throat> okay, so right off the bat, we got this null here in there. Let's hit our up arrow to bring back up what we just typed, right? And let's do it again. Oh, now we got like three nulls in there, you know? Okay, and let's do it again and again and again. Oh, now we got an error. Now we got some error and some nulls and we got all kinds of junk going on here. So you might be going, all right, well, what is actually occurring there? And let me show you what's occurring there. Um, basically, you see how the, uh, the number 15, I don't see it anywhere in here. So it looks like 14. Um, that child thread that was writing, writing 14, right, was invoking the add to list method right here. Now the add to list method just takes in the number and then it uses, it invokes the array list add method, right? Now that's not thread safe. And so you can have problems with multi-thread programs there when you invoke a method that's not thread safe. So every time the add method is invoked, it has to basically do some stuff behind the scenes. Like maybe I'll move move around some of its like uh, base array and maybe expand the base array out a little bit, maybe um, then put that number into that particular slot. And when you have multiple, um, threads invoking that at once it creates a lot of problems because it's not thread safe and they tell you that right in the documentation for ArrayList that it's not thread safe so those those are the problems that you can have up there too you can have index out of bounds exception you know all kinds of all kinds of issues with that so um, how do we ensure that only one thread can invoke this method right here basically the add to list right well which will ensure that only one can invoke the add method too as well well, what we can do is we can come over here and put in synchronized, the synchronized keyword. Now what the synchronized keyword to, um, does is it says, okay, we're going to place an intristic lock on this particular method every time it's invoked, okay? Now the intristic lock or the monitor lock, what that does is that will cause any other threads trying to invoke this to change from the runnable state to the blocking state, okay? So um, basically like in this particular example up here where 14, it, once we apply the synchronize to this, the uh, child thread that is, you know, trying to write number 14 to the array list will then, will have a intristic lock or a monitor lock on it here. So when 15 tries to write it at the exact same time, it will say, oh, hey, there's a lock on there. I'm gonna go from runnable to blocking. And then once um, 14 is done, you know, writing with this method right here, then, oh, okay, I can now have that. So I'm gonna change my state from blocking to runnable and go ahead and execute my code, okay? So very, very simple per se, but you just gotta understand what's going on behind the scenes in order to you know, utilize the synchronize properly. So now that we've applied synchronize to this, come up, let's save it. Let's clear our screen, let's recompile. And uh, what did I do? Oh, spelled synchronized wrong. So I N C H
but I'm not seeing my typo, but I know it's there. Let me just... Oh, you know what? Uh, stupid mistake. All right. Um, the return type has to be right before the name of the um, of the method name. Okay, so uh, synchronize technically has to go in front of void there. Just good. I'm glad that happened there. So I didn't have any misspellings, but I uh, almost forgot that for a moment there. So let's clear our screen. Let's try to recompile again. Compiled successfully. Let's go ahead and run this here. Okay, now you can see we've got... Um, Got our numbers in there, no null values or anything like that. We run it again and again and again and again, and we're all good. We're not getting any sort of issues with the add method there. Let's speed it up and just tap away here and see what we can. There's another thing that's gonna happen. It's gonna rear its ugly face, hopefully. But then again, maybe it won't. Well, if you watched my uh, static, my synchronized static one there, we're gonna get an error there. There we go, all right, excellent. All right, so, um, I'm gonna try to generate the actual error rather than opposed to a null array, shoot. Of course, it doesn't work when you want it to. All right, well, anyway, it's not going to be nice with me. I'll try one more time. Sometimes right after you compile it and do it, it just tends to... All right, well, anyway, there's one more issue here, and for some reason it isn't displaying. I just thought I think my computer just must not have a lot running in the background, so it's uh, getting some stuff there. But it is possible, uh, you know what I'm doing? I'm gonna comment out the active threads. That might be enough for it to give me the behavior that I'm looking for here. So let's go ahead and run that now. Ah, uh, there we go, all right. So we got this exception in thread main concurrent modification exception, all right? So what that means is that basically, um, We've synchronized this uh, add to list method here, right? So that sets an intrinsic lock, and then anything us invokes this also checks to make sure there's an intrinsic lock or a monitor lock, whatever you want to call it. But when we come down here and display the list right here, right? Um, when we get a concurrent modification exception up here, what's happening is one of the child threads, one of these hundred child threads up here, is still invoking this particular method with the add method here. Now, because display list is not synchronized, it doesn't bother checking to see if there's any sort of, you know, intrinsic lock or anything, specifically on, you know, this the array list or any of the any of the objects that are invoked from this this particular class there. So we can fix that issue too by um, applying synchronized to the display list as well, right? Okay, so let's come up here and save this. <clears throat> Recompile, I'm gonna clear my screen. And we're just gonna run this again here and we'll just start going down on that, right? And that looks really good there, right? We're not gonna get that error message again there. But what you'll notice is these array lists are not all the same length, okay? So that's a problem too, isn't it? And I'll explain what's going on there. I'm gonna uncomment out this particular line again here and let's go ahead and save that, right? So we solved one issue with by doing that. So far we've solved two issues in this thing here. So let's clear our screen and let's uh, recompile that, right? And I just want this for display purposes here, right? All right, let's go crazy on this here. Okay, so, um, that isn't quite exactly the one I wanted to hit there. I wanted to hit one with like a partial, partially short one there. All right, well, 
guess I'm gonna have to. Uh, let's. Sometimes, of course, when you want it to this, this. Okay. Oh wow, perfect. Got it there. Okay, so active threads 88, and you can see we didn't get the whole array. Well, we didn't get the concurrent error message because it, it checked to make sure there was no intrinsic locks or anything going on there. But what happened here is uh, out of these 100 or so child threads, right, 88 were still running when we hit this line here. And then when it invoked the uh, display list message down here, um, it said, oh, okay, is anything locked? And sure enough, it didn't try to read the list while it was locked, but then it was put basically into the uh, you know the thread thing there and said okay I'm I'm now blocking and then the second it it was able to uh, get a a lock itself this method was able to get a lock on you know the number list array itself then it went ahead and displayed the list now as you can see it only got up to like the number 32 or whatnot by the time that happened so we displayed the list before it was all done right in other words it was before it was completed so how can we prevent that? And the answer is very simple. We can just put in, you know, the simple while loop here. While um, thread.active count is greater than one, right? Because if our active count is one, that is in fact the um, the main thread there, right? And you know, with the while statement, we can either put in like the code block body, right? Or we can just simply put in a semicolon because this basically makes this a blank statement right there. So you might see me do either way there. I'll just go ahead and leave it as a semicolon. Well, I don't know. Uh, let's just put it in the code block body there. Okay, so now that we've got that last and final piece of code in there, we can go ahead and clear the screen. And let's recompile and let's rerun. And now we can rerun to our heart's content. We're not gonna have anything like that happen again. You can see, if you imagine a vertical line here where they're all ending, they're all the same length. You can see this particular one really had some issues there. And if we hadn't had that code in there, you can see like 47 was even the last one. We had 101 active threads when we hit this line of code right here. Without this while, it would have displayed a list that might have just been completely empty for all we know. So, But then that fixes our last issue. So, you know, when I said that um, beginning of the tutorial that there was so many issues with this code and we've, we've basically fixed them all at this point, that's basically what I meant there. So. That's how you do that. That's the purpose of the synchronized applied to basically an instance method at this point. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this, get rid of that, and just leave you guys with a quick final thought. And that's uh, my next tutorial, I will demonstrate how to apply the synchronized keyword to instance statement blocks. That concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.